This is a really rare occasion in Ireland where I've had to park a car at an angle to get some shelter from the sun to try and actually be able to show the car. The birds are singing, it's the end of August and it's a beautiful summer's morning. So what better way to show you around a car that the best way I can describe is a perfect example of just decent, honest motoring. I reckon if you were to buy one of these, you'd be able to haggle the price down because without any options on the car, it's like 30 euro over 17 grand. It's just a good, honest piece of motoring. If you're after a first car, maybe with everything going on, you don't want to take public transport anymore. You need something that's going to be cheap to run, cheap to tax, easy to park because it's quite small. A car that has plenty of room in the boot for what you're going to need anyway. And then if you do need more space, you have the option of pushing those rear seats back in and giving yourself even more room. And they've got shopping hooks and they've got lights. They don't have a spare uh, tire for you to change, a spare wheel as such. But you know, fingers crossed you won't get a flat tire. <laughs> These little door handles here, they might get a bit annoying. They're high up for kids to reach and they're a little bit finicky when you, when you close the door. It doesn't always close first time. But again, in the back, it's good on a space for two people to uh, fit in the back of the Swift. Let me demonstrate. And my five-year-old had absolutely no difficulty navigating her way around these windy down windows. I didn't have to explain what they were. Just one day I noticed the window was down. I was like, who, who did that? Oh yeah, there's only two buttons up front. The bonus of this is they go all the way down. And in 2020, that's a rare thing these days, believe it or believe it or not. These are privacy glass windows, same with the rear. Depending on what model you have, there's three different trim options in it. As I said, the cheapest one starts from just over 17 grand. Two eyes of fixed points here, they're easy to get at. They're constantly exposed. You don't get a middle armrest as such, but these 60-40 rear seats do give you good flexibility. Leg room is quite okay. Bit of space here. Height is quite okay. It's, it fits a lot into the inside of this car. It packs a bit of a punch. There's a couple of things in the car though, like, like the windows here, that make it feel like a car from 1992 and a car from 2020 all at once. And I'll explain the modern ends of things up the front. So first of all, the key. <laughs> it's an actual key, which is great if you encounter someone who you don't want to talk to late at night in the car park because, well, that'll take their eye out, ladies. In here, you get CarPlay and Android and you get air conditioning. But there's also a little diverter button that switches from the recirculated air to the fresh air coming in and that just reminds me of the early 90s get a lift off somebody's mat from football they might have had one of these japanese cars around here you get controls for your phone your voice activation your many different audio solutions including a dab radio that's on the car there's a little bit of storage around here for sunglasses and things like that you get 12 volt and 120 watt charger you get an auxiliary point and one USB in the front. In fact, in the entire car, there's one USB, which again, it's probably only going to be a city car. Maybe that's not a big problem for you. Color display is a decent size. Reversing camera is very, very clear. It gives you a nice wide shot. Your dials are simple and straightforward, but they, they light up red at nighttime. They look nice. And there's no huge areas here to store stuff. There's no armrests. The glove box is only okay. So storage areas are kind of at a minimum in the car. The bottle holder areas and the door bins, they're pretty decent. But the main purpose, I think, of the inside of the Swift is to squeeze people in and not make them feel like you're in a smaller car. And maybe things like, you know, nice to haves, uh, such as storage areas, are kind of not as important. The important thing is to get four people into this car and make them feel comfortable and be able to travel decent journeys. And from that end, the Swift does it incredibly well. Another example of that noughties versus 2020 would be the front headlight setup, big yellow halogens up here, but then you have LED fog lights down here. So it's a bit of a strange contrast. Sometimes cars manufactured for the Japanese marketers predominantly get criticized that they're not exactly in tune with reality on European, Irish, UK roads. But with the Swift, they actually brought this car to Germany and the UK when they were designing it and road tested it over 10,000 kilometers on those kind of roads. So 
Rolls on this side of the world actually got to play a bit of an input in the designing of this car. Let's go for a spin. It's got 90 brake horsepower. How does that get on? 1.2 engine, 90 brake horsepower, really light steering, really good handling, decent acceleration. The way the hybrid engine in this car works, it more assists moving away from a stop start. A little bit of regen going on automatically in the background, nothing major. It's, it's a fairly small uh, output size hybrid system and it's more just about reducing emissions. That gets your road tax low and your fuel economy pretty decent. Suzuki's official figures are about five liters per 100 kilometers. I've seen closer to six really, but that's probably my heavier uh, foot setup. Some negative points, it's only got a five speed gearbox in this car. Just at motorway speeds, the sixth really would just quiet things down and make things probably even more efficient again. But some some cases, not all cases, in some Japanese design, they really don't like doing huge leaps and just if nothing's really broken then why are you gonna fix it? That can sometimes be the approach and that can end you up with a five speed gearbox in 2020. Visibility is great. In some ways it kind of reminds me of the new Mini, uh, just because the windscreen is nearly the exact same setup, it's nice and wide and you know really clear. You can fit people into the car. The boot actually is bigger than any Mini you're gonna be able to buy. Uh, the interior though just really, that's, that's its big selling point. It's a bigger car than it looks on the outside. Parking it is a doddle because just the overall size of the car, that's very easy. And it's, it's just an enjoyable car to drive. It's, as I said at the start of the video, good honest motoring. Something that will have you getting around in the comfort of your own car for relatively uh, simple and low cost money. And you're gonna get a decent warranty on the car and it just, it hasn't missed a beat. It's just a no frills car. And once you have that mindset about it, then nothing's going to necessarily disappoint. It does have everything you need in a car in 2020, apart from the little retro throwbacks, but you might even get to kind of appreciate them and, and kind of, they add character to the car almost. You may not feel like that, but I'm just trying to be optimistic here. Depending on which trim you go for, the car isn't even 900 kilograms. So that 90 brake horsepower engine, while you might be thinking, is there enough output on that? Well, actually, yeah, it's, it's fine. So to sum up, if you're looking for something new with a warranty, low cost, don't have to worry about the maintenance of NCTs and all that stuff, then this is a car you're gonna have to take a look at because yes, there are cheaper cars in the market, they mightn't have the same levels of comfort. In some cases, technology that this car has, probably won't be hybrids. And this is a solid, honest, just decent little city car for getting around in. And I can't be fairer than that. Thank you for watching. I'll see you very soon.